Hi guys, this is Dr. Mobin again. Uh, so we are continuing with our questions about immunology. Again, these questions are from the lectures which have already been delivered and what I am doing right now is I am going through those lectures and recapping some of the topics in the form of some questions. These questions are something which can be useful uh, for your USMLE studies, these are useful for your scenarios in the hospitals, these are again very useful for your practicing, uh, for, for a practicing doctor. So let us see what is the question. So yesterday we did question number one, today we are doing question number two. The so question number two from immunology from those topics which we have covered so far, the question is this, why is it, why is the case that patients with silicosis show a greater susceptibility to tuberculosis? So that is a basic question. Again the question is why the patients of silicosis show a greater susceptibility to tuberculous infection. So, um, and it is seen that silicosis patients have to, they develop tuberculosis more easily than um, other uh, people who are exposed to mycobacterium tuberculosis. And secondly, when the autopsies are done on the patients with silicosis, sometimes subclinical mycobacterium tuberculosis or tuberculosis uh, signs are found. So the question is why is that happening and here are some choices which I have uh, cooked up. So the one choice is let us say is it because their B cells are not functioning correctly, so suppressed B cells. Is it because their T helper 2 cells are not functioning correctly. So again notice here I am saying T helper 2 cells instead of T helper 1 cells. I hope that you can understand why I did not put T helper 1 here because T helper 1 cells would actually take part in controlling mycobacterium tuberculosis. So we will talk about that in a second. So T helper 2 cells, suppressed T helper 2 cells, then reduced macrophage activity or damaged macrophages and then reduced antibodies or other such options. So let us attempt to answer this question by understanding what is happening in a patient of silicosis and then we will come back to these options and see which option is relevant. So here is the, here is the explanation of the answer before we give the answer. So let us see this, <coughs> silica particles are between 1 to 5 micrometers. So that is our first um, important thing to consider. The silica particles are between 1 to 5 micrometers. The particles which are greater than 5 micrometers, usually they cannot reach the lungs because they are filtered out either in the nasal passages or in the mucociliary passages or in the tracheal passages. The particles which are smaller than 1 micrometer, these particles are sort of air. So they go in and out of the lungs easily and freely and so they do not cause any damage. So the particles which are greater than 5 micrometer will cause damage, sorry will not cause damage because they do not reach the lung. The particles which are lesser than 1 micrometer do not cause damage because they are simply air, they are so small. The particles which are between this size 1 to 5 micrometer, these are the particles which are dangerous for the lung tissue. So that is first. A fact which you should keep in mind. Now what happens is silica is a particle which is or a quartz crystal which is in this range. So in the miners when they are, when they are working and the silica is going in that silica gets trapped. So what happens is, so let us say if I create a bifurcation, I hope you know that the lung airways they divide in binary fashion, so they bifurcate. So at every bifurcation these silica particles they collect at these bifurcations. So now what happens is that the macrophages which live there, these macrophage they would phagocytose these silica quartz particles 
and eat them up in an attempt to try to clear up the junk or the trash here. Good? So far so good. So what have we talked about? Silica particles, they go in, they lodge in the bifurcations of the tracheal tree. The phagocytes, the phagocytes, these are the phagocytes. The phagocytes would engulf these particles and I hope we understand how they engulf that. So let us say if this is a phagocyte, the particle would be engulfed in a phagosome. What happens next? This is, this is a standard process, right? So once the neutrophil or phagocyte has engulfed or has phagocytosed some pathogen, then what happens is the lysosomal, the lysosomal vacuoles are combined with the phagosomes to create the phagolysosome and the digestive enzymes are poured into the vacuole. This is to do what? This is to cause to kill that bacteria or the virus or whatever there is and take care of it. Now here is the, here is the problem. So do not don't forget this. Write it down somewhere, underline this. Here is the problem. When silica goes and sits down in these vacuoles, the silica crystals, the silica, I hope this is the silica crystal. So the silica crystals, they find sialic acid, they, they form sialic acid groups on them. So this is the, this is the start of the problem. So when the silica goes and becomes crystallized, these crystals form the sialic acid uh, groups on them. Now what do these groups, these, these are very reactive with hydrogen. These sialic acid groups are very much reactive with hydrogen. And who, who are these things are going to, where are they going to react with, what are they going to react with? These things are going to react with number one, secondary, pay attention to this, secondary amides of protein, proteins, number one. And number two, ester groups in phospholipids. In phospholipids, the ester groups or phosphoester groups, they are attacked by the sialic acid. So again, sialic acid, very reactive with hydrogen. So what it does is it attacks the secondary amides and proteins and phospholipids. So what happens is these cell membranes, these cell membranes of these vacuoles, these phagosomes and phagolysosomes, what are these made up of? These are made up of phospholipids and these are made up of proteins. So what would happen is that these crystals and the sialic acid formed on these crystals will, will do what? It will attack the cell membrane. When that cell membrane or the phagosome membrane will be attacked, that phagosome will be disrupted. When that will be disrupted, those quartz crystals and sialic acid will be leaked out. When that leak out in the cytosol, again the same action on the cell membranes. Finally, the phagocytic cell membrane will become disrupted and these silica particles will be released out. But not only just the silica particles are released out, what else is released out? If there is some microbacterium tuberculosis trapped in here, that is going to become released out too. If there are any other uh, mediators present in the active macrophage, these are going to be spilled out too. So what is that going to cause? That is going to cause fibrosis, that is going to cause inflammation in the local area plus it is going to cause mycobacterium tuberculosis to come out in the environment and start replicating and going into the other macrophages. Meanwhile, these particles, these silica particles which have come out, they will be engulfed now. So they have broken one phagos, uh, macrophage. What will happen? These silica particles will now be picked up by the other macrophage. What do you think is going to happen to this other macrophage? Same exact fate as the previous one. So what is the reaction? What is the final conclusion? What happens is that these particles in a very stubborn fashion keep entering the macrophages, keep destroying the macrophages, 
keep coming out and keep getting recycled and this process continues. So that is how silica particles actually damage the macrophages. At the same time, the latest research is that these silica particles also activate the macrophages and the activated macrophages secrete a lot of mediators including the tumor necrosis factor. So all those collectively cause damage. So one of the damages that there is fibrosis which occurs. The second damage is that if there is mycobacterium tuberculosis present that will come out and will have a chance to become recycled and start going into other macrophages. And because the macrophage itself is damaged that would allow the mycobacterium tuberculosis tuberculosis to become replicated. So now if we go back here what are the options? Suppressed B cells? So B cells have nothing to do with the intracellular pathogens. Remember what happens is when a pathogen comes in the body it would trigger either T helper 1 pathway or T helper 2 pathway. See here T helper 2. T helper 1 pathway would activate cytotoxicity plus it would activate macrophages. So again these are those lectures which I have delivered already. So it is not necessary that we need to repeat it. This macrophage activity is what is going to cause mycobacterium tuberculosis, tuberculosis to be eradicated. So please remember that the pathway towards cytotoxicity is through T helper 1. So T helper 2 are actually going to activate B cells which in turn are going to release antibodies. So this is the, this is the humoral response and humoral response or antibodies response has nothing to do with the intracellular pathogens. So mycobacterium tuberculosis is a is an intracellular pathogen has not gotten anything to do with the T helper 2 pathway. Why? Because this pathway creates antibodies. So what is, what pathway is important? T helper 1. So coming back here suppressed B cells, it does not matter. B cells are responsible for antibodies. Antibodies has no effect on the mycobacterium tuberculosis. So this is out. Suppressed T helper 2 cells, so if you see here T helper 2 cells are the ones which activate the B cells, B cells are the one which cause the antibodies. So again it is the same effect as that, this is out as well. T helper 2 suppressed T helper 2 would do nothing. If I had said over here suppressed T helper 1 then you should pick that because T helper 1 are the one which would cause the cytotoxicity. Come down here, so then we have reduced macrophage activity or damaged macrophages, yes that is what is happening. So of course this is the primary reason, this is the reason which causes the macrophages to become damaged and have less activity and that causes those, those patients to become susceptible to mycobacterium tuberculosis. Reduced antibody is the same thing, again I am going in this pathway and saying antibody. So I said B cell, T helper cell, antibody, all of those are not active or have nothing to do with this. So that is our question and the answer is the damaged macrophages or reduced number of macrophages. So again the question is why in the patients of silicosis tuberculosis is common and why are they more susceptible to that? And the answer is because silica crystals cause damage to the phagocytes and that causes the reduced activity cause damage to the macrophages which down regulates the macrophage activity and that in, that in turn increases the susceptibility to mycobacterium tuberculosis. Thank you very much and we will continue, thanks.